Glory Lord Hando Robo Shikere Mahande Baba Handa Seasons may change Lord Seasons may change but you remain the same Seasons change Lord in the valley we still exalting you on the mountain top we are saying you are God you never fail oh God your faithfulness remains forever and ever Oh we give you all the praise you are God indeed there is no God like you Father Oh we thank you anyone going through the valley of life Lord you remain the same in the valley Father you remain the same on the mountain top oh God you are God indeed there is no God like you we worship you we adore you Lord there is no God like you almighty God we exalt you Father lift up those weary hands oh God oh anyone who's in the valley oh lift up your feeble hands oh God is there also in the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you. Your faithfulness remains the same, God. We worship you. We adore you, mighty King of glory. Oh, we love you, Lord. God of all seasons. Father, we thank you. You remain the same. We give you all the glory. Don't you open your mouth and bless the Lord. The Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. Let praises be in your mouth tonight in the name of Jesus. Oh, we bless your name, Lord. We magnify your name, mighty King of glory. Your faithfulness remains, Lord. Oh, we thank you. Thank you, Father. Give you all the praise, give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. His faithfulness remains forever and ever. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You're all welcome to tonight's service. Praise God. God is in our midst. Amen. God is here with us. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. Amen. We are still carrying on on this series on stewardship in the month of November as God prepares our hearts to be good stewards. Amen. Above all, God requires of every man that we be good stewards of whatever God has given us. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We started a series last week, um, which I have titled to tend and to keep. Amen. We are going back to that series. We'll just revise a little bit and then move further. Amen. Praise God. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, as you prepare our hearts for the word, amen. Let me just remind you, amen, all the women, um, next week, Thursday, we begin our conference, amen. Praise God. The theme of the conference, oh my God, may God, may God revitalize every area of your life, amen. Amen. He is a good God. We will come and, 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 and be gathered in one place as God renews our strength, amen. The Lord will come as we gather, the Lord Lord will renew our strength. So please send the flyer, send it to your friends, invite your friends. Let's come and gather as women and let God renew us. Amen. Let God renew our mind. Let God renew our life. Let God renew our health, renew every area of our life as we prepare to cross over to the new year. Oh, amen. What a timely time for us to get ready for, for the new year. Praise God. Amen. Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 15. Amen. Genesis 2 and 15. Praise God. The title of the message is to tend and to keep. Amen. About the verse number 15, Genesis 2 and 15, the Bible says, Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden, amen, of Eden, to tend it and to keep it. And we are blessed by the reading of God's word. Amen. To tend it and to keep it. Amen. Just a few weeks ago, one of my colleagues has a, an allotment somewhere next to her house. Every time she comes back, she says, oh, I've got tomatoes. Oh, I've got cucumbers. Oh, I've got lettuce. So, I mean, I, I, I work around the supermarket. So, you know, she brings this whole bag of goodies. I've got fresh onions directly from the garden. And I was like, oh, my God, you have, you know, you are so gifted. He says, no, no, it's not just being gifted, but I take the seed. 
seed, I sow it in the ground and I water the seed and I watch it grow. Amen. And time after time, the seed keeps producing. Amen. The seed keeps producing. So the same with our walk with God. Amen. God is saying to us today, whatever he has put in your hand as a steward of, a steward is just somebody who has been entrusted with something that does not belong to him. Amen. Steward is somebody who has been entrusted with something that doesn't belong to him. Amen. I don't know about you, but have you had an opportunity of somebody saying, oh, I'm just going to town. Can I leave my children with you for you to tend them, to keep them? You know, it's a big ask. It's a big ask for somebody to ask you to look after their children as if they are their own. And I mean, I don't know about you, but when, when, when I'm, given children to look after. I make sure I, I, I go over and above, over and above. You'll make sure the child eats. You'll make sure they drink. I mean, they can drink about five times a day, you know, which is out of the ordinary. Why? Because somebody has entrusted me with their life to tend their children and to keep them. So I will make sure I take care of them. And lo and behold, if a child can get hurt while you are watching after them, you know, I mean, anybody who's watched after children and they hurt themselves after, you know, playing you know everyone can testify how bad they feel because you know to the mother it might look as if you have not been looking after these children but you know children play and they 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 scratch and they bruise and they they scratch themselves you know but when you've been entrusted by somebody to say look after my children i'm coming back in an hour and within the hour they manage to have a cut you know they manage to fall and you think oh my god what's the mother going to say how much about god God has given us so many variable things that he is entrusted in our hands to tend them and to keep them. This, this is um, Adam and Eve who has been expected by God to tend and to keep this garden. This garden had everything they will ever need. Everything they will ever need was in this garden. All God said to them, tend this garden, keep it, amen, tend it and keep it. What does to tend and to keep? To tend means to look after it. All God said, there is a seed already. I've given you every tree, every plant already has a seed that has gone down. All I need for you to do is to look after these seeds and look after the fruit because the fruit, the, 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 the garden is where you are going to eat. The garden is where you are going to be covered, sheltered, there's leaves to cover your nakedness. The garden, that's where you're going to have your shelter. That's where you're going to sleep. So all God is saying, tend it and keep it. Praise God. Everything we need has already been provided by God. Good stewards, they keep and tend what has been entrusted to them. Amen. Praise God. And we do it with all our hearts. Amen. The Bible says in, in Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 4, love the Lord with all your hearts. You cannot tend a garden half-hearted. This garden has to be tended by love. Amen. This garden has to be tended by love. You have to love your children. You have to love your husband. You have
Thank you, Father. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord, with all our hearts. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Re kayando robo si katariando robo si keteriando robo shike. Oh, we thank you, Father. We give you all the glory. We are here to tend your garden. Amen. We are here to keep it. Amen. We are good stewards of what has been given to us. Amen. Praise you, Lord. Amen and amen. Where were we? Amen. Guard your heart. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23, guard your heart with all diligence. Amen. With all diligence, guard it. You cannot serve God with a heart that you do not guard because you have to check yourself at all times that am I still on the cause of Jesus Christ? Am I still doing the work of him who has called me out of darkness into his marvelous light? Proverbs 4, 20, Ephesians 4 and 31, the Bible says, get rid of all everything out of your heart. Get rid of bitterness. Get rid of malice. Get rid of rage. Get rid of anger. Amen. Get rid, get rid of all those things out of your heart so you can serve the Lord your God with all diligence. Amen. Serve him with, with a pure heart. Present your heart before him. Do not just render your garments or your body, but rend your heart unto the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Because we need to be aware the enemy is always looking for something to, to, to rob out of us, to rob our joy, to take off our joy. Amen. First Peter 5 and eight, the Bible says, be sober, be sober, child of God, and be vigilant, be vigilant on a daily basis, be watchful. Every time the enemy can find a way to get into your life, but you need to be sober, you need to be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he can devour. He is always looking for somebody to, to make him a target. But minus you, you will not be his target in the name of Jesus. Your household will not be a target to the schemes of the enemy because you have a God who is living. And this God has entrusted you with everything that he has given you. Is it money God has given you? God has entrusted you as a steward of that bank account. Amen. Whatever you do with whatever he has blessed you with, you are a steward. Be a good steward. Be accountable. Amen. Is it children God has entrusted into your hand? You might think, oh, I'm just a housewife. Oh, I'm just a house husband. Oh, I'm just looking after children day in, day out. But God has entrusted you with the lives of those children. Amen. Is it your business that God has given you an idea? idea, um, you are a steward. You are a steward to look after that business with every fiber of your being, whether you have a, a low that week or you have a high, but still serve God diligently as if God was the one overlooking you working for your business. Amen. Is it at your workplace? Be diligent. Be diligent with everything God has given you. 
work as if you know you own that company because it's when your promotion will come amen work as if you know there's no other day to make it right you know because yesterday is gone today is here tomorrow we do not know about tomorrow so every day god gives us an opportunity to be good stewards of the things is it your marriage why don't you work at that marriage until it becomes the symbol of what god said it needs to be husband must love their wives at christ as christ has loved the church and and wives must obey their my their husbands must reverence their husbands amen because when we walk in that god makes everything beautiful amen so when we tend and keep that which god has given us we are preparing for the harvest amen who is going to benefit if you tend and and look after a garden water it many a times we look at our neighbors our neighbors garden you know one of 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 the people I was talking to today they're saying oh my neighbor is not looking after their garden so it makes the houses in that area look as if we are not taking care of our houses no mind your own house keep it make it good water it you know take the weed out you know sometimes the word of god is there to take every weed out of our life everything that doesn't belong in the garden that god has given us every anger that creeps in from time to time god is saying that is the weed i don't need that in my garden if there's any rage of of if any kind any bitterness of any kind say god says to you i don't need that bitterness in this garden for you to flourish your heart must be pure love the lord with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself that is a big ask to love your neighbor as yourself amen how can you let your neighbor go without food amen therefore you love your neighbor as you love yourself you ask yourself this question if somebody did this thing to me will i be happy do unto others as you would love them to do unto you amen tend your garden keep it don't envy other people's gardens a few you know sometimes you look at somebody who's prosperous and you think what are they what are they doing you know what are they doing that has made them this prosperous but they are working it they are working it they are tending their garden and they are keeping it amen or and at the night at the break of dawn they are working at their garden and they are watering it they are learning they are keeping it amen their marriage they are putting an effort into making their marriage work is it relationship they are putting an effort into their relationships to make sure they work and the god who sees what you do in secret will reward you how openly he is a, an open reward god amen he is an open reward god praise god the story of of david we we hear of the story of david that you know david you know fought with goliath and he beat him and he was a young shepherd boy and you wonder how did that happen the bible says in second samuel 7:8 this is what the lord god says of david i took you from the sheep fold from following the sheep to be the ruler of my people to be the ruler over my people israel god took david from the sheep fold from tending the sheep you know you might be in the sheep fold right now and you think no one sees you You might be in the sheep fold right now and thinking, "Oh my god, no one will ever discover me." But it was in that sheep fold that David was discovered. It's how he looked after the sheep day and night, how he protected the sheep day and night. He looked after those sheep. He didn't want anything to come near those sheep. Is there something you are protecting with all that is within you? Something that God has entrusted in your hand that you will protect it with all that is within? Is it your ministry? Are you protecting protecting it with prayer are you protecting it with fasting are you protecting it with making declarations that god will bless your ministry or you are sitting and watching david was in the sheep fold it seemed like nothing was happening is it your business it seems like you know you will never make a sale you never you know prosper you will never advance in life but god is looking at you as a david in 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 the sheep fold and thinking 
David, my servant, is working fervently. He is due a promotion. They, there will come a day for promotion where you will not even have to announce yourself. God will announce you. Amen. God will announce you. God will say, this is my servant who has been faithful when looking after the sheep. And now he'll be the ruler of Israel. Praise God. He will be the ruler of Israel. Everyone looked at David and think, what do you mean you will be able to defeat this Goliath? Who are you to think you will defeat? You see, people can look at you and despise you, but God sees what you do in secret. Amen. That is why you qualify for the next level of your life. Amen. God sees what you are watering in the background. No one sees when you water it, but God can see it all. Amen. So David was busy working in the in in the sheepfold looking after them look how he asked when they asked him david how how do you qualify for you to fight with this goliath how how what makes you qualify when all the men the big men of israel they are all running away from goliath what do you think why how do you think you can ever defeat this goliath amen let's look at first samuel chapter 17 praise god chapter 17 and from verse number 20 from verse number 33 first samuel 17 and 33 and saul said to david you are not able to go against this philistine to fight with him for you are a youth do not despise your days of humble beginnings you might be a youth right now but all we need is a youth who will stand up and say god has entrusted me with this idea i will stand for it i will make sure this this idea comes to pass i will make sure i work at this idea until it achieves what god says it needs to achieve amen so saul said but you are only a youth and he a man of war from his youth goliath this is what he's talking about that goliath was a man of war from his youth so he has been trained for a long time and here you come david you are a youth and you think you can do great exploits for the lord verse 14 says but david said to saul your servant used to keep his father's sheep and when a lion or a bear came to t and took a lamb out of the flock I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear. Amen. And these uncircumcised Philistines will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Amen. Praise God. This Philistine will be like one of them, one of those lions, one of those bears that I'm going to hold by his beard and, and struck him down. Amen. Because he has practiced this in the desert by his by himself, where he was with his Lord. He has practiced it. He has killed a bear. He has killed a lion with his hand. Therefore, this is nothing before him. The confidence he has is that God who was with him in the desert is the same God who is with him now. Who are you with? With right now who is with you who is with you in your life who is with you in your life david said god was with me i killed the bear therefore i qualify amen so he has killed both the bear and the lion and this um, uncircumcised um, philistine will be just like one of them amen this will be your story as you prepare in the bag seats of life thinking no one sees you your time is coming god will elevate you god will lift you up god as long as you become a good steward of what god has has given you david left the sheep but he didn't leave the sheep alone when he left to come to this war zone he left the sheep with another shepherd to say look i'm going to this war zone look after my sheep amen if you if you leave and go somewhere do you let somebody look after that which concerns your life do you assign somebody responsible to look after your life to look after that which matters to you david did just that he looked after the ship even when he went to fight with goliath when he was ready to fight with goliath he left the ship with another shepherd to say look tend my ship look after my ship because 
I'm going to do my assignment. My time has come. Your time is coming. Amen. In the name of Jesus, whatever God has been preparing you in the background, as long as you are a good steward with what he has given you, God sees what you do in secret places. If it's prayer he has assigned you to do, he sees you praying day and night. He sees you praying without ceasing. He sees you praying with all that is within you, praying for the nations, praying for your church, praying for your pastors, praying for the church of Jesus Christ to grow praying for this nation praying against this virus god sees that you are a good steward of what he has is, is commissioned into your hand and a day will come when god will 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 crown you praise god let's look into the book of first peter first peter chapter five and see what will happen if we continue to be fervent with what god has given us praise god continue to be fervent the god who sees what you do in secret the cries you've cried in secret, crying for the nations, crying for a breakthrough. God sees everything you do in secret. Praise God. First Peter chapter five from verse two to four. God is saying of every shepherd, those who have been entrusted to look after something, you are a shepherd of whatever God has commissioned in your hand. Praise God. He says of shepherds, shepherd, the flock of God, which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly. We are serving willingly. No one has forced us to serve God. Amen. You ought to serve God. How? Willingly. Without compulsion. Amen. Not for dis dishonest gain but eagerly we are not serving God for any dishonest gain but we are serving him how eagerly nor as by being the Lord over the entrusted that which is entrusted to you but being examples to the flock amen we ought to be examples when people see us we need to stand and be an example of the flock of Jesus Christ and when Christ when the chief shepherd shall appear amen you will receive the crown of glory that that does not fade away. Amen. Amen. You will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. When Christ returns and Christ is asking for a report and saying, what did you do with what I have given you? We should be able to account and say, Lord, we do not do anything to gain anything dishonestly, but we served you with all our heart. God will say, now you deserve the crown of glory. Enter into my rest. Praise God. Because he is the great shepherd. He is the one who showed us the way. Amen. Praise God. And those who, who are good stewards, they do not sleep during their assignment. When they are waiting to, to impress the king of kings, you don't sleep or slumber or you do things, you know, anyhow, just to, to do things. But we do things in preparation because the Bible tells us that we do not know the hour, the minute, the second God will come back and ask us for an account of what we've done as stewards. Amen. Let's look at Matthew chapter 25 and see that story of the virgins. Amen. The five of them were foolish. Five of them were were wise amen five of them were good stewards five of them were not good stewards praise god matthew chapter 25 praise god ask yourself am i a good steward am i a good steward am i a good steward of what god has given me from verse from verse one matthew chapter 25 and from verse one then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Amen. We all know the bridegroom will return. Amen. They all took their lamps to meet the bridegroom. How, however, now five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. Amen. Those who were foolish took their lamp and took no oil with them. Amen. But the wise took all oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and they all slept. Amen. And at midnight, the midnight hour will come when God is expecting us to give an account of what we've done with the things he has entrusted in our hands. At midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, 
Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy yourselves. Amen. That was too late, isn't it? To go and buy the oil. God, as God, good stewards, is expecting us now to go buy the oil. Go buy the oil now for this season. Go buy the oil to keep your lamp bright and lit. When the bridegroom comes, you just light your lamp and say, I'm ready to go. Praise God. There were five virgins. Five decided, yes, we have the lamp, but we will, you know, not bother about filling it up with oil. We will not bother filling it up with information. We will not bother filling it up with all the good treasures. We will not bother filling it up with the anointing, praying, fasting, seeking God, loving God, serving God, because those are the things that keep your oil burning. Amen. You don't want your oil to be to be cut off because, you know, once your oil is cut off, it's like you are you are doing things, you know, out of your own strength. Fill your lamp with oil. Make sure you pray. That is how you can fill your lamp. Make sure you read the word of God. His word is the light unto our path. It lights our path. Fill your lamp with the word. Fill your lamp with worship. Amen. Fill your lamp with worship. Fill your lamp with serving God with all your heart, with all your soul, with everything that is within it. And you are not doing this to please men as a man pleaser. You are doing it as unto the Lord. Praise God. You are doing it as if God is watching you serve that business as if God is watching you serve your family as if God is, is, is saying oh well done you are doing a good job because sometimes when when you are on your own you feel like oh this work is too much this work is too exhausting but once you think that God I'm doing this for you I'm serving you with all my heart even if nobody sees me even if nobody says thank you in my workplace I'm serving you with all my heart I am giving you your best I am feeling my all I am I am tender this garden that you have given me I am putting more anointing I'm putting more prayer more worship goes in more word more word so when the foolish ones when the bridegroom came in the middle of the night when you you can't go and buy the oil because all the oil merchants have gone they've gone home to sleep as well so you are stranded this should not be the life of a good steward we should not be stranded in life praise god we should seek the lord while it is day because the night cometh when no man can work when no one can actually run and say oh let me let me get a bit of prayer there let me get a bit of worship there let me get a bit of 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 the word that pastor used to preach no Put the word in your spirit. Put the word, put the worship in your spirit. Put your, the love of God in your spirit. Put, let God, you know, create a new heart in you. If your heart is stony, let God put a new heart of flesh, a pliable heart that can be burned by the word of God. Put a, Remove every heart of stone. If you've hardened your heart against God and saying God has not come through for me, your heart, your heart is hard towards the things of God. Today, we pray that God God will give you a heart of flesh, a heart that is receptive to his word, the heart that is a heart that will be with God. No matter what happens in your life, let your heart be pliable. Let your heart be soft. Let your heart be moved by, be filled by what you are doing for the Lord without murmuring, without complaining, without murmuring, without complaining, because life can present you with all sorts of different things. But when you are with God, when your heart is fixed on him, you know that there is a crown that is laid up for you. You can go through the valleys of life, um, but God is with you. He'll never leave you. He will never forsake you. Keep your eyes fixed on him. Praise God. Keep your eyes glued on him. Say, God, I will not move until you move. I will not be moved by the circumstances that I see. Amen. Praise God. The Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd. Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not one there is nothing that you'll ever need if you walk with the shepherd walk with the shepherd serve with the shepherd praise god he says he makes me lie in green pastures the pastures god is making you lie they are green praise god wherever he leads you he leads you into green pastures you will lack no good thing in your life in the mighty name of jesus god is upholding you just like david was looking after the sheep he led the sheep into green pastures God also is leading you into green pastures. You 
will lack no good thing. He leads me beside still waters. Every rambling water around your life will be stilled in the name of Jesus. Seek the Lord while he can still be found. The Bible says he restores my soul. Praise God. May God restore your soul. May God restore every part of your life that the enemy has tried to bring confusion, to bring doubts of the word of God. He will restore your soul in the name of Jesus. He leads me in the path of righteousness. Hold on tight to God. He is your great shepherd. He is the one who will lead you to green pastures. Praise God for his name's sake. The Bible says, yeah, though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Fear no evil, child of God. Fear no evil. God is with you. Seek the Lord. Seek him. Look, let your eyes be fixed on him. Not on your circumstances, because if you fix your eyes on your circumstances, you will sink. Amen. Fix your eyes on him. Fix your gaze on him. Fix your eyes. He is walking. Even if you think this is the, the, the deepest valley I've ever been in my life, God is still upholding your hand. Amen. Hold on. Keep your eyes fixed on him in the name of Jesus. He says, fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That's why we need the rod, the word of God to be filled in our lamp. Let's fill our lamp ready for when the master comes. Fill it with your word. Fill it with his word. Fill it with the word of God. Fill it with worship. Fill your lamp and be ready at all time. He will prepare a table for you in the midst of your enemies. Oh, he's preparing a table for you. Don't worry. This, this thing you are going through is going to come, right? Serve him with all your heart. Be a good steward of whatever. Serve him with gladness, not with grumpiness and murmuring and complaining and a sad face. Serve him with all your heart to say, God, I'm doing this for you. God, I am looking after this children as unto the Lord. God, I am gladness. Serve him with all your heart. He prepares a table before you in the midst of your enemies. God will take you from the back side of life and put you on a pedestal. Be faithful at the back of life. Be faithful with little beginnings. Be faithful day after day. Be faithful with what he has entrusted in your hand and be a good steward because our master is coming. He will ask you, my servant, what have you done with the giftings that I have given you? What have you done? I said, serve in church and you didn't want to serve. I said, invite people you didn't want to invite people. I said, you know, do this in the ministry. You, you have a good voice, sing. And you didn't want to because you were shy. You thought you are doing it to men. But this was unto me. What are you doing with the gifts that God has given you? As, as you serve God with your gifts, God will honor you. God will lift you up. God will put you on a pedestal. There is a reward for those who are good stewards in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We thank you, Lord, that we return. Father, with our hearts, of if anybody's heart has been hardened, through the pressures they have been going through. Father, tonight we pray that let all the hearts be soft, oh God. Let all the hearts, oh God, receive receive your warmth. Let every heart receive a heart of flesh that is receptive to your word, oh God. Let, oh God, any coldness in our hearts, in the hearts of somebody tonight, let any coldness, oh God, be removed today, oh God. Fill our hearts again, oh God. Fill our hearts with joy. Fill our hearts with a desire to serve. Fill our hearts with a desire to be good, good stewards of what you have given us. In the name of Jesus, let us tend and keep all the gardens you have entrusted in our hands, Lord. Let us tend and keep them in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We give you all the glory in the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. You are an awesome God. Oh, creating us a new heart, oh God. A clean heart, Father. A clean heart to serve you with all that is within us, Lord. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory and praise. Yes, Lord. You are an awesome God. Oh, we thank you, Father. Creating us a clean heart, oh God. A heart to serve whether people see or they don't see in the early hours of the morning give us a desire oh God to fill our lamps Lord to fill our lamps to fill our lamps to the overflow 
Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory. Give us the desire to fill our lamps, Lord. If anybody has not received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, this is your moment, this is your time. If your heart has hardened towards the things of God, you feel like you don't trust God anymore because you don't see anything moving in your life. Today, let your heart, oh, be, be a heart of flesh in the name of Jesus. Let every heart of stone be removed. Let the word of God find room in your heart to penetrate today in the name of Jesus. If you're not giving him your life today, this is your day. This is your moment. Give him your heart. Give him your heart. Give him your soul. Give him everything. Say this prayer with me, Lord Jesus. I come to you just as I am. I surrender my heart to you. Come live in me, oh God. Come be my Lord, oh God. Come be my Savior. From today, I am born again. I will serve you all the days of my life. In the name of Jesus. If you said that prayer, you are born again. Jesus is coming into your heart. He is living in your heart right now. He will give you strength for every day. He will strengthen your weak hands. He will strengthen your weak areas in your life. In the name of Jesus. Commune with him. Read his word. Worship him. Oh, be in the company of saints. Be in the company of other believers. When we gather as a church, gather with us. Gather with us because iron sharpens iron. As we gather together, we are sharpening each other in the name of Jesus. Welcome to the family of believers, those who are set for heaven, who are serving God with their gifts. Amen. Praise God. We thank God for your life. We give him praise. We give him all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. What an awesome God we serve. Amen. Praise God. Go and tend and keep what God has entrusted in your hands. Amen. Praise God. We are meeting again this Sunday for our three on our virtual services. We start at 7.30 in the morning. Praise God. And our second service resumes straight after at 9 a.m. Praise God. And our third service resumes at 10.30 in the morning. We are looking forward to, to seeing you in our services. Let's come and worship the Lord together. Do not forsake the gathering of the saints because you don't want the enemy to sift you and, and put you in the corner. Gather when the live stream goes. Let's connect and come and worship together in Jesus' name. Praise God. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shalom, peace to you and have a wonderful weekend. God bless you. Amen.